Judges, chapter number 6. Amen. I'm just going to read from my copy and paste tonight. Amen. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midians came up, and the Amalekites, and the children of the east, and they came together against them, and they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth, till, uh, uh, till thou come unto Gaza, and left no uh, substance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up uh, with their cattle in their tents, and they came, up, came as grasshoppers uh, for the multitude. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Amen. This is very interesting to me in its nature. We know much about uh, Gideon and what transpires afterwards, but sometimes I think we, we forget the history of what's happening prior to what God is doing in the judge that he raised up in Gideon. And so we, we see here that the Midianites, they're inhabiting really around the Gulf edge uh, 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 of the region and uh, the Northwest uh, Territory of, of really what we would consider the Arabian Peninsula. And uh, because their land was really uh, not very friendly land to work with, Sister Dot. Uh, it wasn't the land that you would till up and you would plant a garden in. And uh, uh, their land was really, it was uh, hostile in many ways. And really they became nomads, these Midianites. And they were herders. They ran their sheep. And, and uh, uh, they really lived off of other people. They really went in and took from other people. They were slave traders. Uh, uh, they, they, they just uh, made a living by raiding other people's territory. That's how they survived, these Midianites that we're going to be looking at this evening. And uh, uh, they really had no organized military, per se, from what I understand. They uh, did not have any infrastructure when it came to a military-type organization. Uh, they simply had javelins. They had weapons. And, and, and uh, no one really wanted to raid their territory because there was nothing to gain from it. And should Sister Susan, someone want to raid these Midianites, well, they would just break away and leave a wide entrance for the enemy to come into. And so the Midianites really, they, they, uh, uh, the only thing they had for them was they had... Uh, these domesticated uh, camels that were really uh, unique for where they lived because they could, Brother David, they could endure the hot temperatures of the day in the desert, but also endure the cold temperatures of the night. They, they were amazing in, in how that they, they were. They were really kind of uh, gnarly in the way that they looked, but yet they could carry up to a quarter ton of booty when they uh, raided a place. And so uh, when they rode in, these Midianites on their camels alone, it was very intimidating, particularly for the Israelites as, as the Midianites came against them. And uh, uh, so here they were, the Midianites, they got along really uh, uh, not very uh, well with, with any of their neighbors. However, they really hated the Israelites, and probably because God honored the Israelites and blessed them and gave them, even though the Israelites, particularly at this time, were not following the commandments of God and, and the relationship with God, uh, but, but yet God was, was, was blessing them. Uh, in comparison to the Midianites. And so uh, here it has been only 40 years since Deborah and Barak uh, got to give them a great victory in Caesarea. And uh, uh, soon before you knew it, here it was that, that uh, uh, the Israelites had really turned their hearts against God. And uh, uh, God had permitted two Midianite tribal kings, the word of God says, Zeba, Zeba and Zalmumah uh, to, to fortify and come against the, Midian, the, the Israelites. And uh, here it is as they're gathered together. The Midianites really didn't have any strategic plans. They just 
I'm hoping I can do 15 minutes, maybe 20. Give me five more extra minutes. I'm trying to lay a groundwork and make it quick. But they would come in and, and, and they, they always came at harvest time against the Israelites. They would come in and, and, and they would take everything that the Israelites had gained during the harvest season. Uh, they, they really didn't molest the people. They didn't hurt anybody. They didn't take any slaves. They just came in and, and they took the bounty from the harvest that, that these Israelites had worked so hard at. They lived in caves. They lived in the mountain. But, but their soil was fertile. And God blessed them. They worked hard. And everything that they did, uh, it just seemed like there was a great harvest. And in this particular period of the judges, it seemed like everything that, that, that the Israelites gained, Brother David, the enemy came in and destroyed. But yet they always left them enough to plant and to get ready for the next year. So they would come in. They wouldn't take the donkey, Brother David, but they would take the coal. They wouldn't take uh, the, the, the cow. They would take the calf. And they wouldn't take the ewe, but they would take the lamb. Uh, they wouldn't take the orchard and destroy the orchard. They simply took the fruit. Uh, they didn't uh, destroy destroyed the wine press, they took the wine, uh, and, and so forth. You understand the picture. They come out where the honeybees are, they don't destroy the hive, but they take the honey and they leave. And so here it is, they leave enough seed for uh, for, for the crops to be planted next year, but, but they take everything that is a bounty and everything that is a harvest, and there as they loot and take that, uh, that, that bounty, uh, they live very well all year long. And here the Israelites are, uh, they're having a very, very difficult time. They, they descend in, 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 in a direction uh, that the Israelites don't know will be while they're, they're, they're crushing the, uh, the grapes, the wine press. Would it be while they're pressing the olives? Would it be while they're putting the sheaves away? Would it be while birthing is given to animals? They don't know, but one thing for sure, uh, the enemy always came in and steals the harvest from these Israelites. And it goes on for seven years. I want to tell you, the enemy's not changed much in all those years. The enemy likes to come in and steal our harvest. Amen. He'll leave us with enough that we can carry on, uh, but it can be discouraging because he steals the harvest from us. And so I, I want to look at that to this evening for just a few moments, that God definitely is a God of more, and God is a God of addition, and God wants to add things to our life. But more often than not, the enemy still works in such a way that we're working hard and we're laboring. The Word of God says uh, that Apollo, uh, uh, Paul said he planted and Apollo waters, but God gives the increase. Here it is that, that we work, we plant, we water, and God gives the increase, but the enemy wants to steal it away. Amen. The enemy wants to steal the, the fruits of the Spirit that, that are being produced in our life. Uh, the, the, the enemy wants to destroy our children. The enemy wants to destroy our homes. The enemy wants to destroy our church and soul and growth and maturity. He, he wants it. He wants it. Uh, he'll allow us just to live and survive, but he'll take away our harvest and discourage us. So tonight, I want you to know that God is a God of blessing. Amen. And the enemy may not take us down to ground zero, but he'll get us to a place where he will steal the harvest from us. And so I believe that there's two ways in which we can have increase, in which we can have a, a bounty, and we can have a, a, a produce. And first of all, it's spiritually, but we can have it uh, 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 individually. And the second thing is we can have it corporately as a church body, uh, as we as believers, as we fear God, the Word of God says that we are changed unto His likeness. You know, the enemy will do whatever he can do while you're fearing God to rob you from being like God. I'm telling you, it's time that we rage war on the enemy. We ask God to help us. You may look in the mirror and you may say, but I'm fearing God and I'm doing what's right, but I'm not seeing my, my transformation uh, like God the way that I want. Do you know, don't let the enemy lie to you. Amen. God wants to transform you and change you. Amen. Uh, God wants us producing spiritual fruit and righteousness. God wants us to grow in wisdom and knowledge in His Word. Amen. God wants our faith to increase. Amen. God wants us, I believe tonight God wants to keep us in good physical health and God wants to keep us in good spiritual health. I believe 
faith and God wants to add virtue and temperance and patience and godliness. Amen. Even in our suffering, the Word of God says that Christ would abound in us. Amen. God wants to abound in us, but the enemy wants to destroy and take from us what God wants us to harvest. Amen. It's time that as individuals we say, devil, I, 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 I'm raging war. I, I work for this. Amen. I want the harvest of my effort. Can you imagine how discouraging that must have been for the Israelites? Amen. For seven years to get out and work. It's work to plant a garden. It's a work to have herds and crops. And here they are with their camels and, and they take the bounty. They put it up on the camel. They take the herds and they put it in front of the, the camels and they drive it off and they're left with ground uh, uh, what, what they began with. Uh, there's, there's, there, there's no more harvest. It's all gone. How discouraging. How many of you have planted into someone's life? Amen. You, you planted the seed and you've watered and you've worked corporately together. Amen. Even as a church, we work together to, to give the Word of God to folks, to pray with folks. We see them come in and the enemy wants to snatch that uh, which, which God has done. Amen. The enemy wants to discourage and rob even those who are here. And the Word of God tells us that uh, corporately as a church, we can experience uh, uh, growth and harvest. Amen. As we publish the good Word everywhere and souls are added to the church, then we cultivate an atmosphere of edifying one another and loving one another and praying for one another and being unified together, uh, uh, preferring one another over ourselves. And, and, and we stick together. We show our brotherly love and forbearance. Amen. But uh, we're motivated as we work for God and work for one another. Another, and we share the word of God. Amen. The word of God says in Ephesians 4.16, make an increase of the body uh, unto the edify uh, uh, of itself in love. Amen. The word of God says that as we love one another and encourage one another, uh, that, that, that we, our hearts are, uh, have unbelievableness and holiness. That we, if we would continue in the word, the world would know that we are his disciples. But the enemy wants to destroy the increase. Amen. The enemy wants to destroy the increase. In a church, he'll start up cliques and fractions. He'll start up rivalries. He'll start up jealousies and emulations. Amen. He'll get in people's hearts that their self-importance, whether uh, more uh, important than the building of the body of Christ, power grabbing, destroying uh, love and unity. But one day, the Bible says that the children of Israel, Sister Susan, that they call out on God. Here it is, Sister Tina, as we're calling out on God, God raised up a judge named Gideon. We probably are all most familiar with the story of Gideon. Amen. And this year, we're going to keep the harvest. Amen. We're trusting God in this. And so when they come against the enemy, those Amalekites, and they blow those 300 trumpets, and there's lanterns all the way around, they think that they're being attacked by a big army. Amen. God knew what he was doing. God knew how to handle the situation. Amen. Yeah, don't worry about me. I never count numbers. I don't care about numbers. I'm long beyond that in my life. Amen. But what I do know is no matter what our numbers, if God is in it and God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. And I'm taking the harvest of my faithfulness to the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter if we have 10,000 or we have 10. Amen. If we are faithful to God, there will be a harvest for us. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Amen. So here it is that they begin to fight against one another. Amen. And, and, and they were scared and they begin to attack one another, the Amalekites. And then getting got to these two tribal heads and he destroyed them. And God brought a victory there. And Zeba and, and, and Zalmunna, and they were killed. And God said to Israel, this time you get to keep your increase. Amen. One thing that I know tonight is that we need to fight together for the increase that God gives us. Amen. Uh, personally and corporately, I'm holding on to this. 
I believe that tonight there are some things that you have worked together for personally. You and your prayer life, you and your physical life, amen. Whether it be things that you've asked God to increase you spiritually, or whether it's things that God you've asked God to increase you physically, amen. And the enemy comes in and he wants to destroy the increase and the harvest that God has for you. Let me tell you that it is just the rule of thumb. If you plant, you will harvest. How many of you stuck some plants out in your garden this year? Why did you do it? To give away. To give away? All right, that's good. Hey, amen. Thank you, brother. Remember me. <laughs> he remembers me. He remembers you. All right. I'm, I'm just kidding you there. But, but this is the bottom line. You planted that because you expected a harvest. Now, folks, I want to tell you that just because you're a believer doesn't mean that you need to live min min minimally. I'm not preaching a blab it and grab it. I'm not preaching a prosperity doctrine tonight. I'm not preaching that. I'm just simply saying tonight this, is that if we plant, amen, the rule of planting is that we will also harvest. Amen. Have you prayed for your family? Amen. Don't let the devil take your harvest from you. Amen. Stand up and claim it in the name of Jesus and say, devil, you're not going to plant lies and deceit and emulation. Amen. May the Spirit of God have victory in the situation. Have you worked all hard for things in your life? You go faithfully to your job. Amen. You work. You expect God to provide and meet your needs and for you to be able to now sow into the kingdom of God by what he's blessed you with. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to rob what God has given you the health and the ability and the wisdom to plant. Amen. Amen. We work hard around here loving on each other, praying for each other. Amen. We're not going to allow emulations and fractions and strife to come into the body of Christ. Amen. And hinder us from the move of the Holy Ghost. Hinder our prayer us taking down mountains and opening up seas. Amen. We are taking the harvest because we trust God in the harvest. We are living righteous. We are doing what God has called us to. So every right is ours to claim the harvest. Amen. 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 We're going to take it tonight. We have to remember that the enemy, amen, the enemy has to resist when we stand beneath the blood of Jesus Christ and in the power of Christ. Amen. We need to encourage others to stand together with us as a body. <clears throat> know this. There may be times that the enemy looks formidable. He may look for, uh, vicious and ferocious. But know this, that we are greater than him and his lives. We can have what God has blessed us with. You remember in the Old Testament, the roster of David's men and found in that roster there is Shama, amen, who stands in that patch of lentils, that pea patch, and he defends it until his hand grew weird, uh, played to the sword. The Word of God says, he said, I'm defending what God has blessed me with. He has blessed me with the ability to plant this crop. He has blessed me with the ability to take care of this crop. And I'm about to harvest this crop. And I'm not giving it up to the Philistines. Things. Amen. I'm going to stand here and fight. And God gave him the victory in the middle of his pea patch. To some folks, they may have said, well, it's just a little old pea patch. But to him, it was his life. It was his effort. It's what God had blessed him with and called him to. And he did it. Amen. Whether it be your life spiritually and what God has done for you, whether it be this church, whether it be your family, whether it be things financially for you, whether it be your health, I believe this tonight. If God has blessed us with it, and we have sown and we have trusted God. Amen. One plants, one waters, and God gives the increase. This is the increase that God has given, and I am taking it. The enemy is not going to steal it. Amen. Amen. We pray for our family. We pray for lots of things. Let's believe that when we pray that God will give us the victory. Amen. We've got to trust Him. I'm done. I'm keeping my work. Amen. I have more notes. Let's be serious tonight. Let's be the victors at harvest. But I know that you want to give those away. But I tell you what, 
If someone came by your place and stole all your, 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 your hard work after you planted, you cultivated, you planted, you watered, you took care of, someone comes to all, it make you mad. They leave you one tomato to save the seed for next year. I know it sounds crazy. But sometimes we're like the Israelites. We allow the enemy to destroy that we just have enough to survive. When God wants to give us a harvest. And then I'm not giving up on some things. I'm believing it for the harvest. I'm trusting God. I'm going to go my part. I don't do it alone. There are others who labor with me in the vineyard. But I know it's God who gives the increase. But I want to enjoy the increase. Sister Beth, if you come to the piano, let's all find a place around the altar. Let's sing this time in harvest. I'm taking the increase. I'm not living on them, but now I'm taking what you bless me with. Because I've been faithful. And I know you're faithful. So I take it. Let's go back to